Man, isn't this too early for a winter break day? <sighs> what is up, people? Is it ridiculously early for a day on winter break? Yes. But you know what? You know what? That doesn't matter. Because salamanders don't care what time it is. That's right, baby. We're going to Tishomingo State Park in Northeast Mississippi. And we're going to be trying to find a bunch of freaking salamanders. This place is two hours away, so let me try this. Here, let me see if I can. So you just. You go like this. Welcome to the cave. We're at this specific location to look for salamanders, right? But not just any salamander. We're looking for a salamander that lives in a cave, specifically. Can you guess what kind of salamander that might be called? Probably not a cave salamander or anything like that. First things first, I gotta get my gear. The major extent of my gear is this, a flashlight. That's pretty much all you need for this. As you can see, there are a crap ton of little cracks and crevices and things like that. Most people would think that there's nothing in them, but when you shine your light into those cracks and crevices, you find all kinds of really cool little creatures, and salamanders are one of them. So, hell, let's give it a go. Let's see what we find. I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and I'll let you guys know if I find anything. Okay, so there's a cave salamander right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. You probably can't. It's just a little bit of red. Only issue, I'm gonna have to get my feet a little bit wet. That's fine. This is no, no biggie. Let's get over there and say hello to our little friend. This is so exciting. I love this stuff. Here he is. All right, so here we go. This is a cave salamander. And as you can see, he is in fact in a cave. Now what's great about this is that he's actually in a very easy spot for me to go ahead and just pick him up. I'm gonna bring him over there to an easier location to, you know, film him and show him to you guys. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Look at our little friend here. Whoa! No, 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 no. Please don't run away. This is a really cool species of salamander, all right? This is a cave salamander. Their eyes are so buggy. They literally just pop out of their head. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, that's definitely one of the ways that you can really tell that this is definitely not a pure cave-dwelling species because most cave-dwelling species uh, have actually evolved to either be blind or have very poor vision. You'd think that's a little bit contradictory to their whole setting because they're in the dark and they would need to see. After you spend a really, really long time in a really dark area, you start to lose your vision and you start to not need it anymore because it's so dark that you can't really use your vision anymore. So instead, uniquely cave-dwelling species usually rely on some other kind of sense other than sight or vision to hunt down their prey, to find a mate, all that mumbo jumbo. This guy's not the case though. As you can see, he's got super buggy eyes. His vision's very nice. They're found in plenty of other places aside from just caves. I mean, I have a friend. He lives in uh, Kentucky at Land Between the Lakes. His dad owns a farm, and I find these guys all the time on his farm. Pretty weird, right? Just under rocks and logs, and I even found some underneath old sheet metal once. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some pictures and videos of this salamander here, and uh, we're gonna see if we can find any more. All right, my friend. I'm gonna go ahead and put you right back. How about right here? Right there. Yeah, there you go. Is that not a cool salamander or what? So I'm on the inside of the cave, just flipped a few rocks and I found this little guy. This is a slimy salamander. I'm not going to say too much about him because uh, we'll probably see a few more of these, a couple of bigger ones, but this is just a baby. Okay, so as I said, we'd probably run into a few more of these guys. This one's much bigger. Okay, this is a slimy salamander. These guys live alongside with the cave salamanders and a bunch of other different species. These are no big deal to me. I get these home in Memphis pretty much all the time. I just find them in the forest, but they also will hang out in caves and crevices and rocks and things like that. So now you're probably wondering, why do they call them slimy salamanders? Well, the reason they call them slimy salamanders is because specifically these guys excrete a very, very sticky and slimy membrane on their skin when they're handled to protect them against predators so it makes things not want to eat them. It's basically like the super glue of uh, nature. But aside from that, what if I told you these salamanders had no lungs? What? What? They, well then how do they breathe? These salamanders breathe 100% through their skin. That's why it's so, so important 
to keep your hands wet when you're handling these because this genus of salamanders, the plethodons, they're more woodland dwelling salamanders, they more than any other salamander breathe through their skin. Their skin is a transparent membrane and they take in everything else that's surrounding them from their environment into their body. That's why it is so dangerous for these guys for a ecosystem to be polluted. These guys are one of the first animals to be affected by it. You're a sticky, sticky boy. Sticky, sticky, sticky. But um anyway, um <clears throat> so that's one of the cool things that sets these guys apart from other salamanders. I find them at home all the time. He's a good little friend of mine. With that, we're gonna check out some other salamanders. Okay, let's go let him go. Alright, let's go ahead and hop in the car. Whoa, we're here! <laughs> In this park resides a very awesome salamander species, and it is called a green salamander. There's some people over there, they're looking at me like I'm crazy. They're just playing disc golf. Here. You'll play it from there? Okay. No problem. Anyway, so inside this specific rock crevice lives a species of salamander that looks just like this moth. And I know they're in there right now because I can actually see one's little head poking out at me. Let's take a look. This is a green salamander. This is a fantastic little salamander. They're one of the most interesting little guys in probably the eastern United States. Probably my favorite salamander ever, honestly, because, I mean, just look at that coloration. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Some rock faces, they're completely absent. They're, they're not there. But some, you'll actually get little colonies. And there's about four or five that I know of that live in this specific rock outcropping. Gosh, I mean, this is easily one of the prettiest salamanders there is. And these guys have a little bit of a backstory to them. Back when the American chestnut trees were around, it was said that these guys, instead of the rock faces, they would actually hang out in the cracks of bark or, you know, little nooks and crannies that formed in the trees over time from cracking. They would actually hang out in those places a lot more commonly than they would these. Once all the chestnut trees went away, they started using these rock faces instead. So now, today, this is the main type of habitat that you find them in, these uh, secluded rock faces in the middle of the forest. You still can find them in trees sometimes. A lot of the times at night, if you come out, they are nocturnal. Sometimes you can find them climbing on trees. And as you can see, I'm holding them completely vertically he's actually got a prehensile tail so that's one of the really cool things about the salamanders look at him he's actually holding on to my ring finger with his tail I can even let go of his little leg right there. He is holding on to me completely just with his tail. You will not find that in a lot of other salamanders. This is a very special trait that is completely specific to these little guys right here. Now, I don't want to handle him for too long, so I'm going to go ahead and get some pictures and videos of him, and then I'm just going to let him back go and let him uh, live out his life. Now it is time for the release of my beautiful, beautiful little friend right back into his little crevice. And this is how you find him. Every single time you find them right there in that little crevice like that. Except they're usually facing the other way. They're usually looking at you. However incredible that was, the adventure is not over yet. We actually have other species of salamander that also live here. We're actually going to check out a waterfall that has an interesting species of salamander that lives there too. So we're going to go ahead and look at that. Alright, we made it to the waterfall. So now the search for dusky salamanders begins. One thing real quick. Don't be like that. Do not be like that. That is not cool. It's a gorgeous waterfall, and someone decided that they were important enough to spray paint their name just for what? For, for fun? But aside from that, let's go look for some dusky salamanders in that beautiful, beautiful waterfall. So I actually managed to snag a dusky. It was a little harder than I thought. I usually find them pretty quickly. It took me a little while this time, but I got one. So as you can see, he's definitely darker in color and nowhere near as pretty as some of the other salamanders we've seen. They're definitely more sporadic. It's harder to hold on to them. Luckily, in Tishomingo, there's only one species. This is the Desmognathus genus. They are one of the most confusing salamander genuses to identify. You can usually tell it's a desmog, but telling what species after that is usually kind of difficult. But lucky for me, in this region, in Tishomingo, Mississippi, there's only one species.
species of Desmognathus salamander, and that's the spotted dusky. Super common, usually pretty easy to find. Some fishermen actually even use them as bait, which I don't condone at all because amphibian populations are dropping very quickly worldwide and we need as many amphibians as we can. No matter how common the species is, we need to conserve every single species. There's chytrid fungus, there's pollution, there's all kinds of things that are wiping amphibians of all different species out worldwide. We really cannot take our amphibian population for granted. This particular species, they look like the salamander version of a, uh, a hunk of turd pretty much, but I still love them. They're not as pretty as all the other salamanders we've seen, but I still love them. I'll go ahead and let them go and uh, see if we can find anything else. Tishomingo is awesome. Woo! All right. Let's go ahead and uh, poop. There he goes. Okay, so what we've got here, this is a zigzag salamander. The zigzag salamander is one species that I always thought we had in Tishomingo, but uh, I hadn't found one until today, and I actually found one in exactly the same place that I've found, you know, green salamanders before. I found them the same exact way. I shined a light in the crack, and I, uh, you know, got them out with the wire. The weird thing is that usually you find these, you know, lifting up rocks out in the middle of the forest, which I had tried before and hadn't found one that way. Uh, these are in the same genus as the slimy salamanders. They're a plethodon species, so they are typically a more woodland dwelling species. They don't have a larval stage just like the slimy salamanders do, but unlike the slimy salamanders, these do not uh, become ridiculously sticky or anything like that, okay? So they don't have that defense mechanism. So that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get some pictures and uh, let him go and we'll see what else we can find here in Tishomingo. Awesome stuff. All right, everybody. Well, that was my trip to Tishomingo. By no means is that every salamander species that lives here. There are many more species that live here other than those. Who knows if I find a bunch more species, maybe I'll make a part two to this video, perhaps. Until then. Ah! Until then, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all learned something cool. Have a great day. I'll see you all soon.